Hello, and once again, welcome to one final episode of the week for Hooky Hour. You may notice I've got a different bit of a... Different bit of a... I've got a different shirt on. Different color shirt, because, uh... Technically, I am filming this on a different night from the other four videos. So, uh, you know. Sometimes, it just happens. Uh... Anyways... Probably shouldn't prolong for too long because you're here to find out what happens next, right? Just like I am, so let's get a move on. Um, all right. So first thing we got to do, I have my handy dandy guy pulled up. We need to. All right. So we got that. I think last time we left off, I had presented the profile on uh, Miss Andrews to Edgeworth, and now I'm supposed to ask Edgeworth about this suicide report. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here, here is the second part. Oh, thank you. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name. It's Adrian Andrews. Oh, if it's... Excuse me, but, uh... <laughs> Ah, I think that's called a homicide. Or actually, wait, no. Is there a, two people trying to kill themselves, actually? I think I might have misinterpreted that. I'm gonna find out, though. Uh, Miss Andrews, um, what did she do? She, she tried to kill herself? Oh. Okay, so I did misinterpret that. I thought they were saying that Miss Andrews tried to put a... Or try to take the life of Miss Celeste. What was her name? Celeste and Pox? Celeste. <laughs> Rest in Chicken Pox? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. I mean, yeah, that's an unfortunate truth, isn't it? Sometimes it does come out of the blue. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews, dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Alright, well, now that we know... We're going to present... The, uh, Celeste and Pox to... And present chicken pox to Mr. On Guard. See if you can guard this. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much? Mr. Lawyer? I may be your client, but I hope you'll keep your... I hope you'll keep yourself out of my personal life. Hey, can we, like, get this guy off the case? Uh, no, I, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment to keep. You're in detention! Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick? <laughs> this Celeste and Pox lady. Somehow, I get the feeling she is a very important person in all this. You don't say. Also, is my camera, like, a little too high up? Haha. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Alright, anyways. Uh, move! Now I think we're supposed to go to whatchamacallit. We're supposed to go... We gotta go back to the hotel lobby. And then go to Viola Hall. And then go to the hallway. And then go to On Guard's room. Where the hell am I supposed to go? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Attempted suicide report. Apparently we're supposed to get a attempted suicide report. Oh. I'm, okay. What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I didn't realize if it just got to four, it would just take off the top bar. Anyways, what's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Also, hello, Mr. Edgeworth. I have gone around the globe twice. Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celestin Pox. 
And... And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? The world has gone dark. Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she? Buh. Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste in Pax, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is this what they call following someone to the grave? Oh, jeez, Pearly. After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She is someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything to keep them near. Uh-oh. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. Wow, this is, uh, this is a lot. And that's, that's the nature of her dependency on others? But she appeared so independently. When Celeste and Pox suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She is only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay, now I think we can do the thing where I gotta go to the room. Uh. Hotel lobby. Move right along. Go to the criminal affair. Nope. Uh, uh, the yellow hall. Getting sidetracked somehow. Okay. Oh, wait. On guard's room! Oh my god, we made it back. March 21st. There we go. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. <laughs> Somehow Matt On Guard is also here. <laughs> but it looks like she's talking with someone. A dude in a red jacket? That's Francisca Von Karma! <gasps> Miss Von Karma! What are you doing here? Well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? That, that's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. <laughs> I sure hope she didn't follow us going back to, like, criminal affairs in my own department, like, five times. Pearls, you're always following after that detective... After that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Uh, is he gonna come at her beck and call? What is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fool's every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. How? <laughs> I feel really sorry for this poor detective gumshoe now. Now then. Also, if he's a detective, does he even know that he's being tracked? Because when we asked him about it, he was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's just, you know, every every time it, that beeps, it just, she comes. I don't know how. <laughs> Let's stop wasting time, Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed, wa-pow! Understood? Uh, alright. Only a tarot card or something? The seashell. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, does she? Yeah, I think uh, getting whipped over the head will do that. Uh, talk. Oh. Uh. Oh. Oops. I've my brain is completely uh, locked down. <laughs> I I am just following this guy to a T now. In case that wasn't too obvious. Uh, okay, so apparently we got to present this dealio. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and make that save. Oh my god! It's a save, that's for sure. All right, present. Bugatuba. Um, I'd like to ask you about this. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, out of order. 
this dude first. I asked to become Mr. On Guard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition, and his soothing smile, and his warm, friendly eyes. Mr. On Guard does seem like a rather weak willed man, always doing as he's told. Did you make that up, Phoenix? <laughs> He's always, he's always saying my manager, right, Nick? Okay. Okay, great. Motive for murder. Do you have any ideas as to, as to why Mr. Corda was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job, so do you have any ideas? <laughs> Not a clue. Six Cyclops show up. Oh, we got four. Uh, Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a Cyclops, Mr. Nick? Yes. There's getting to be more and more of these lately. Alright, we're gonna do it. Present the Magata. I think we have enough. I sure hope I did all the steps correctly. Didn't, you know? Motive for murder! Why was Juan Corda murdered? You ask me? Or if you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. Ongar's life in danger by your actions? Jeez. I feel like Phoenix is definitely, like, overstepping his boundaries a little bit. Why do you have... Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corda. You were not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. Ah. You are not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow I highly doubt that. Yes, we're gonna present... The Celeste in Pox. Here you go, chicken pox. Yeah, get close to him now. I'm very bad at connecting with people. They're so depressing for the most part. Um, but I especially dislike feeble-minded individuals. Yes, well, that's why I don't think I could ever be intimate with you. Ooh, ooh. So, I guess she's saying I'm both depressing and stupid? But I am certain you are very close with the victim. Say that all you like, but you still don't have any proof. Oh, I was, I was fishing for proof. That's what I that's what I needed to find. Apparently. Ah. Evidence. <laughs> the magazine clipping. What does this actually say? Uh, superstar in an ultra-hot se mega-secret love scandal. Reliable sources say that Juan Corda has been getting in close to the serious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. I feel like this is just gonna offend her more than anything, but you know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll present it. Take that. You and Mr. Corda had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third rate tabloid article. Also, yeah, not exactly the most presentable thing you could find. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into the story. Come on, man. As to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on your good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Corda? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Corda for this person's sake? Uh, duh, Miss Chicken Pox's sake. Ha <laughs> ha, take that, bang bang. Uh, Celeste and Pox, your mentor. How do you know about Celeste? Shedder. Miss and Pox, she committed suicide, didn't she? Her impact? Impact? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corrida's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corda, so if you could, so you could find out more about her suicide note. You have a great imagination. 
You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid! Miss Andrews? There is no mystery surrounding her death, none. It would be pointless for me to force myself into our relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Was there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you are completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. I'm gonna prove it with this. You're the only one. Aha, uh -huh, I knew it. Of course, as I always did all along. That one. Miss Impax's suicide note was never found, was it? Ding. It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corrida. Uh, one. And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corrida. Another one broken. I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives, lives of others. That's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. I'm gonna make you super uncomfortable. <laughs> what? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Slax and Slax. That Slax was someone very special to you. Damn, are we gonna really present the. Oh my god. Alright, well, this is kind of brutal, not gonna lie. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and. Oh, you know, here you go. Here's your own suicide report, ma'am. Miss Andrews, you. You nearly went through this, through with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Duh. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie, a facade, as Edgeworth just taught me that word. I guess. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's... You were dependent on... Slax, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! Ah, oh, seriously, Phoenix, like, stop, man. <laughs> when Celeste passed suddenly, passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her notes. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corda of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? Also, I know we have gone over the time, but we're gonna see this. I think we don't have too much to go. So we're gonna we're gonna see this through until we actually get to the day of the court. Uh what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why the victim killed. Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Corrida dead. Ooh, ooh. Throwing that out there, are we? Me? Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And therefore, you wanted to kill. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Ding. Hey, we did it. All right, well, we got that. <laughs> All right. Got her health back, that's nice. Motive for murder. It's true, I am a woman who can only live in insecurity. Dang, we have just completely torn her down, I guess. Uh, I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews? This one thing is the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. 
Mine and mine alone. I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I did was just present your own suicide report to you. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corrida. Celeste. Without her? Without her, I became scared. Everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corda to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if there's fire, there's a fire department. Anyways, and if they purposely added fuel to the fire, they would keep the celebrity world burning. What are you trying to say, Nick? <laughs> uh, but as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me. That's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask, too. Can you, like, never mention that out loud again? Yeah, there it is. I'd like for you to keep it a secret, please. Miss Von Karma is standing, like, over there. Miss Andrews... If, if people found out about my weakness, uh, I would sooner choose to die than live. I'm <laughs> Do it again. Uh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Uh, man, Phoenix. <laughs> As she's the overthinking type. She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is with that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. Ah, okay. Punch. What is it? It looks like a seashell. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. You're not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. On Guard in your capable hands. <laughs> uh, well, alright. Alright, and I believe with that, we're gonna make our way over to the uh, office. Well, I think we've gathered all about all we can. What about Miss Sigmaya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearl, she looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been walking all over the place, or all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? <gasps> How could you tell? <laughs> oh, I'm okay, really. I'm fine. I really am. <laughs> Just smash cut to her snoring a minute later. You don't look fine to me. Thank you. Look, you look the same as you always have, which I guess is not fine. Oh, Mr. Powers. Goodbye, Mr. Powers. Hello, Miss Old Bag. Goodbye, Miss Old Bag. Alright, we're here. Oh my god, we're finally here at the Law and Co. offices. So, what now? Well, we did one thing for sure. Uh, embarrass Miss Andrews. That's what we did. You mean Miss uh, Cel Celebes? Uh, Celepax and Suicide? That's right, she was also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Beep, beep, beep. Uh oh. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Hello? F uh, right in co-law offices. Do you have a case? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, you're... Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. Maya? Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. Phew. Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. What? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost, wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. She's like choke, like that. <laughs> ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis. What could she possibly mean by that? <laughs> Damn it, she cut me off. 
Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? What the hell's a sis? <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. Sigh, you're a hopeless one. I'm sorry. Ah! Oh my god, it's... Mia. I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. Alright, we gotta move quick, cause holy moly, we're going overboard. DG, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna tell you to cut out some of that, uh... <laughs> cut out some of my, uh, earlier... Uh, accidental <laughs> getting lost. Uh, okay, talk. Um, Maya situation. How's Maya? She's safe for now. That kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe, but Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left, and I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use uh, spirit channeling like that. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper. The kidnapper, what's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And she didn't see the face of her attacker. Arg. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. The inner machinations of her own mind. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. You, when you were with her? Date, time, location. Uh-oh. Ugh, I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. Good thing we have, like, a full, uh, wine rack of shit. <laughs> I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Well, technically, he could not kill you by just passively letting you, uh, you know, starve to death, I guess. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Alright. We gotta... Examine. Let's examine the wine rack, why not? What's this? It feels like there's a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Card on the ground. Huh? Someone dropped a card here. It kind of looks like a business card. There's no name on it. Maya, can you just like kick the wooden door down? <laughs> Is that an option? Hmm, it's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Okay, so we have the connection of Miss Andrews and this two-faced stitched up guy. Uh... Drat, it's locked. Hmm, but this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Ah, that's it. This shell card. This shell gas station card. If I use this, maybe I can get a quick discount. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. All right, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. Oops, looks like I super locked it. Now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. Oh, is that it? Oh my god, wait, she actually just walked on out of there. That's what she did, I guess. Alright, well, that was one hell of an extended episode. <laughs> uh, we'll see how much of it actually makes it in. Um, but for now, until next time, we'll be getting on to the final trial of the game. Let's go! It's, it's, been, it's been a long time coming, so. I won't spend any more time harping, but I will see you all next time on Hoople Hour, where we're going to get into this MF and trial. Let's go. See you then. Bye.